Man United have already won the League Cup this season. Trophy. Tick. Ended that little drought. But Ten Hag will want the Cup treble. I know the league is the focus. And after two positive results, burying that Newcastle disappointment, we now turn towards Sevilla on Thursday at Old Trafford under the floodlights. It's not the pinnacle of European football. We should hopefully be back there next year. But I'm going to run through the team news, uh, conversations that we need to have around Casemiro, Ericsson, Bruno, Rashford, Anthony, Sant. So much to discuss in this preview and starting 11 prediction for the severe game on Thursday. So make sure you do drop a like on the video. I'll be back on Thursday, back in the studio. The last couple of days in Morocco. I've really, really enjoyed it out here. As I enjoyed, look at that for a segue, that game against Everton. 21 shots in the first half we had. And it was just dominant. Man United putting the pressure on and on and on until the moment of quality came from Sancho and McTominay. And United dominated. To see United doing that to a team at Old Trafford, it's what you need to see. You want to see fast starts. And it's something that Ten Hag, I'll be honest, that our team hasn't had enough of this year. We've had that in these last two games, and it's made a substantial difference. Now, severe on Wednesday, there are injury concerns. I don't need to tell you about them. Luke Shaw and Marcus Rashford. When you're playing as many games as Man United are, you're going to get muscle injuries. I Genuinely, I'm just a little bit surprised. It hasn't happened a bit earlier. But both of them are concerns ahead of the game. And I'll kind of be surprised if either of them start. I'll be honest. I'm not sure this is a game where Eric Ten Hag is going to take that risk. In terms of Sevilla, look at the game that they just had in La Liga. Absolutely balmy game. They played 70 minutes with 10 men. Got a, what, look at that. They conceded two last-minute goals to, go, to turn a 2-0 at home into a 2-all against Celta Vigo. Absolutely balmy. Uh, it's a shame, really, that the... Uh, the red cards don't get carried across. But I'll tell you what. I hope this doesn't happen. But I believe that Casemiro and Bruno are both a yellow card away from being suspended for the second leg. Casemiro, I swear, if you miss any more games through suspension because he's returning to the team. Now, let's take a look at Man United's team that faced Everton at the weekend. There was a, what was it, two, a couple of changes that he made? Maguire came in, and I thought Maguire played pretty well. And I'll be honest, if I'm looking defensively, I think Maguire is pretty much the only conversation that we need to have in that defense. I think wan Bissaka starts. He, his form is just so much better than Delo. I don't Honestly, I don't know what's happened to Delo post the World Cup. I'm sure he'll continue. He'll get better as the season progresses. But what a drop-off he's had, eh? You can let me know what you think about Delo in the comments below. But Malassia, I think he is a very good understudy to Luke Shaw. I really, really do. Pretty much every time he's been called upon this year, whenever Shaw's... After Brentford, when Shaw was dropped with Maguire and Ronaldo, Malasia came in and had four storming games against Liverpool and Arsenal. I think he's a great little signing that we've made for 15 million. I don't think we need to make more of them. We need a, the right back equivalent of that. Because I personally think that Wan Masaka will be moved on in the summer. But Wan Masaka deserves to start this game. And as I said, I personally think we'll see Varane come back in, right? Martinez and Varane, it is our partnership. But, but credit to Maguire, he played well against Everton. Because they didn't press our defence, De Gea had time on the ball. Matomane had time on the ball. Maguire had time on the ball. And with that time on the ball, it enabled them to have better performances. I don't know whether we're going to see Sevilla operate with a higher press. I expected it in our last two games, and it's not happened in either of them. I personally feel we'll see Varane come back into this starting eleven, and I think we'll see Maguire drop to the bench. Now, the question that you might have, you say, Sam, where, where's the rotation going to happen? Because we've got Nottingham Forest coming up on Sunday. And the league is the focus. As much as I would love United to win the Europa League, Ten Hag would love United to win the Europa League, the top four is the focus. Now, because of what we've done against um, Brentford and, and Everton, we've given ourselves a real advantage there. Let's see what goes next. But in terms of midfield, that's where the real questions lie around this team on Thursday because, ah, and I take great pleasure in saying this, Casemiro and Eriksen are both fit and available for Manchester United. I don't even know the last, was it some point in January where I was able to say that? We've had to deal with Eriksen being missing through injury and Casemiro being suspended for life, apparently. Look, Casemiro, if you come into this team, please do not get a yellow card and miss the second leg. Seriously. Maybe because of that, Eric Ten Hag won't take a risk with Casemiro. I don't personally think he think Ten Hag looks at Casemiro and just goes, and um, we'll just not put him in a team because he could get a yellow card. I think he would trust him not to get it. And I like to say that I would completely trust him not to get it. 
<laughs> I'm not sure I completely do. I'll tell you what, though. Probably the biggest question I've got around the return of Casemiro and Eriksen is, does that mean that Bruno's going to move away from this deeper line playmaker position? Because he's been phenomenal in these last couple of games. Really has been. It's not just the passes that he's been making. It's the way he's been playing. It's a criticism that I think is fairly um, thrown towards Bruno. Is it? He's just got uh, his natural way and start of playing football is at full tilt, 100% pace. It doesn't really re rarely does he slow it down. And I think that's kind of what he's shown in these last couple of games. He's, he's, he's just kept the tempo moving and chopped and changed it and always made himself available and dropped into space. I think the player who definitely misses out is Sabitza. That's not through bad performances, because I think, again, in these last couple of games, McTominay and, well, Brentford and Newcastle, I think McTominay and Sabitza have both played quite well. But I think with everyone that's available, I think there's definitely going to be changes in midfield. I personally feel we'll see this. I think we'll see McTominay drop to the bench. I think we'll see Casemiro come in. Uh, I don't know, actually. You might even see Sabitza, Sabitza play there too. I'm kind of half inclined to think it's going to be that. Casemiro at the base of the midfield with Bruno just in front in that deeper playmaking role with Sabitza in the number 10, where he has been really, really impressive. Honestly, I think, look, and this is, that's Maguire. This is the right problem to have. It really is. You know, you've got genuine options here, quality options, and we haven't even spoken about Fred there. Maybe this is a game where we're going to see Fred getting uh, a role. Maybe Sabitza will drop to the bench and Fred will play in that number 10 type position so that he can go for the aggressive press from the front. And maybe that's the start of play because if, if, if Ten Hag wants United to play sort of how we did against Spurs at home, for example, you could well see that. You could see Fred come in and just operate that really aggressive front press. United to go fast at the start. So many different options in midfield. I personally think we'll see... Sub I'm half inclined to... Actually, no, I'm going to keep Fred there. I think I'm going to keep Fred there. I'm going to put Fred... I don't particularly like Fred in the number 10 position, I'll be completely honest. But I like him with that aggressive front press. If we're going to operate that against Sevilla, which I hope we do, because that fast start will make all the difference. It really will make all the difference. And I think, look, as much as we can talk about the midfield, I've really got to praise both of these lads. Anthony and Sancho in these last couple of games have been a real, real threat. I'm not just talking about Jaden Sancho getting the assist against Everton. I think he created five chances in that game, if I'm correct, which is more than anybody else on the pitch. And Jaden Sancho has just had a... It's been up and down. Like the, the, the elation of him returning hasn't been followed by barnstorming performances, which I think a lot of us had hoped for. But Sancho looked really, really effective, especially in those tight spaces, in that low block against Everton, when they were just on the edge of the box. He's the one that can find the cute pass. He's the one that can find the space. Real confidence in that pass that he gave to McTominay. Just slammed it with the side of his foot. McTominay didn't have to touch it once, just bam back, bammed it in the back of the net. I liked what I've seen from Sancho in these last couple of games. And especially with Marcus Rashford and the injury concerns, who definitely won't be risking this game, I think Sancho keeps his position down there on the left wing. And I personally think that Anthony keeps his position on the right. I believe Anthony is more important to this, the shape of United's attack than most people give him credit for. Does his finishing need to improve? Uh, yes, it does. Does everybody's finishing need to improve? Uh, yes, it does. We had 21 shots in that first half against Everton. We got one goal. All right. It's not just an Anthony problem. It's a United problem. Everyone's got to work on that. But he's getting himself in the right positions. Uh, the he's got a good link up, I think. The, actually, probably the best link up we got on that right hand side is Anthony and Wambasaka. Never ever thought in a million years I would ever be saying that. I like Anthony. Does the final product need to improve? Yes, just like it does with every single player. But he starts for me, and he starts on that right hand side. And the only change I think you can really talk about up front is, of course, Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford. I don't think Ten Hag risks him. Just like I don't think he risks, risks sure. He doesn't need to because he's now got options. Martial. Now, the question, which I know what you're going to say in the comments below, the question is whether or not Martial starts or Val Vekor starts because there's no way that either of them completes 90 minutes in this game. That's my opinion. I would personally rather see Martial. So I think Ten Hag's going to manage Martial a bit differently this time around. 
I think I've said it a couple of times, I'd be surprised if we see Martial pay, play a full 90 minutes for United between now and the end of the season. Not in the, not in the way that I'm predicting injuries, but I think Ten Hag's going to go, right, let's manage his game time. Let's give him 30, 40 minutes there as a sub or start him and give him an hour. I think Ten Hag might start Martial in this game, bring him off after like 50, 55 minutes, and then bring Veghorst on to do the, the running towards the end of the game where hopefully United are holding on to a lead and we just need to see the game out. I think that's going to be the, the option that Ten Hag goes for. So I think it's going to be Rashford, of course, who's not available at all, but he's going to drop down there. And I think Martial starts. And that as a front four, that's got a lot of movement and a lot of pressing in it. And I think it would work quite well. Now, my prediction for the game, you can let me know what you think in the comments below, but I'm going for a 2-0 again. I was right with the Everton one. His fingers crossed I'm right with this one too. United are just... I'm so surprised that we've... I think at this point last year, our season was dead, done. Well, and not terrible competitions, floating in the middle of the table, and we were just begging for the season to come to an end. Now we've won the League Cup. We're in that top four. We can finish third this season. We've got the FA Cup semi-final coming up in a week. What, 11 days' time? We've got a Europa League quarter-final on Thursday. It's a testament to the work that this man has done, but this team is stretched. The return of Casemiro and Eriksen is big in that midfield. The return of Martial to fitness is big up front. That's why I think we can cope with the injuries to the likes of Rashford and Shaw, and hopefully neither of them are too severe. But that will be my prediction for the starting 11. De Gea in goal with a back five of Wan-Bissaka, Malasia, Martinez and Varane, a midfield three of Casemiro, Bruno and Fred, and a front three of Sancho, Anthony and Martial. I'm going for a 2-0. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, but this might be the last video when, I've, well, when I'm out here in Marrakesh. I'm back on Thursday. Really looking forward to the game. Can't wait to get the live show started again because I missed it. Best community in the world. So make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And if you're not, oh, if we can win the Europa League as well this season. Mm -mm.